Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. This is going to be interesting. So, you may be saying to yourself, why are you speaking on tape to me instead of appearing in person? Well, I kind of am. It's been a very busy, busy weekend. And as you've noticed, probably, the show is being posted a little bit later than normal. And for that, I apologize, but it's not without good reason. The reason is I've been enjoying a lot of what Florida has to offer, specifically in the Disney World realm. Went to Epcot, went to Magic Kingdom, and today went to Animal Kingdom and experienced some amazing, amazing things. And at the outset, I said to myself, I said, Self, we should get some really good intros and outros at these amazing places and share it with folks. But I got so caught up in the moment, I completely forgot to do so. So I tried to make this as interesting as possible, and rather than just film myself against a wall, I thought, man, let's make a tape. thought that'd be kind of fun, so hopefully you feel that way as well. But anyway, thank you so much for joining us today. We've got an awesome show. We're going to take a look at a mini jukebox. You're not going to want to miss this. Welcome to Recordology. Okay, and today we are looking at the Arc Rocket Athena Mini Jukebox. We've had jukeboxes on the show before. They always seem to do pretty good. This is the AR-04, and if you remember Arc Rocket, uh, we reviewed a record player of theirs a couple weeks ago. It did surprisingly well. It was really cool. This is made in China, and obviously there's not much to see here. I find this interesting down here. Don't footmark, which I think means don't stand on it. And I would wholeheartedly agree that's probably good advice. Now that it has shed its box, it is now in its retail packaging. We can see it in all of its glory. I have not a clue about what this can or cannot do. No idea what this one does. But it says Athena Multimedia Jukebox. 50s style jukebox with Bluetooth for wireless music streaming and illuminated lights. A truly genuine and classic style listening to the old and new as you can see there it says designed and engineered in the usa and i've noticed a lot of companies doing this lately it's actually really cool that they are obviously still sourcing overseas but they are designing domestically i've seen that more and more which is is really really neat and the packaging as you can see just looks cool looks like a lot of fun so let's go ahead and open it up okay this is a tall box so it's kind of hard to do this with it just standing on the thing. This bag is not a toy. We've got an audio cable there and a user manual. Looks very well labeled. AC adapter. And then the styrofoam insulation and then the product itself. I'm just gonna go ahead, okay, the bag comes off. <laughs> and there is the device itself. Set that aside for a second and then we can see there's not much in there. A couple pieces of styrofoam and some silica packets. Okay, this looks really cool and form factor wise, this is the same exact size and very similar to the Victrola. So I'm guessing we're probably looking at a common OEM here, but that's fine. I mean, it's really cool. It's definitely got some differences, but I thought it would be kind of fun to bring the Victrola and put it side by side with this Arc Rocket so we can see in a little bit more detail. I always like to geek out of stuff. Now, the Victrola you have seen in the background of almost every video we've made since we reviewed this product many years ago now, several years ago anyway, like this was like 2018, I think we reviewed this thing. And since that time, it has enjoyed a place on the counter in the kitchen. This is a Bluetooth speaker and a CD player. You can uh, put your CD in right there, although we've hardly used a CD player, but our son really enjoyed the Bluetooth speaker capability and, um, it's just cool. We usually just let the lights play all day long. It just kind of oscillates through different colors of lights. And then on the right, we've got a very, very similar, similar thing going on with the CD player right here. It may be locked shut. Maybe there's an eject for this one, but you can see it's the same idea. This is just, it's all very, very similar, not identical, 
very similar. This one's a tad smaller. It's not quite, you can see that the arc rocket is indeed a tiny bit smaller, but not by much. It looks awesome. It looks really, really cool. It always cracks me up how modern jukeboxes don't really have anything going on up here, which is where, you know, the record changer would be on a, on a real jukebox. So they put in like a design, like this one has this pattern in the back. This one has sort of this rainbow effect pattern. Some of them put lights in there. And if you get a modern full-size jukebox, they actually have a record player up there, which is really, really cool. But yeah, I just wanted to compare the two a little bit. I would say still that they're, I would, I'm just gonna guess that they're probably made by the same OEM, but I can't verify that. I could dig into the FCC stuff. I don't really do that much anymore. Um, but just, you know, it's probable that they are made by the same company. That being said, we're here to look at the Arc Rocket, so let's take a deeper dive. From a pricing standpoint, this is $139 on Amazon right now. It's on sale, normally $189. That's a lot of money for a Bluetooth speaker. But this does more, apparently. This has other features. I think that other one, that Victrola, may have an FM radio as well, but it's Bluetooth, FM radio, and CD. This, I can tell you just by looking at it, has some additional features. But before we get into the front, we do have a speaker. I can get a better shot of it there. And actually, let me just go ahead and lift it up so you can see better. But yeah, there is a speaker on the sides there. Spinning it around back, we've got a Masonite back panel. And let's take a closer look at that. Light mode is play and hold, so it's probably like oscillating colors or solid. Then we've got the nine volt, one amp power supply socket and an FM antenna on the bottom. We've got foam pads and more of the, uh, this is like, see how it's like tacked in there, stapled in there. So this will be like a wood or wood veneer. It looks like a plywood. The construction feels okay. It's got screws in the back. Obviously, if you open it, you're gonna avoid the warranty, but from a construction fit and finish standpoint, it feels like the right weight for what it should be. It's very similar to the Victrola. And I don't wanna do the whole video comparing the two because I want this to stand on its own, stand or fail on its own. So let's go ahead and kind of do a top down close look at the front panel and see what controls and features this has. And obviously we will power this up and test out everything, but let's just take a closer look to begin with. We see the branding and the little window at the top. I don't know if that area of a jukebox has a name, but we've got a cool design back there that blends well with the colors matching the trim on the unit as well. Going down a bit, we have, I guess what you would call hype stickers on the side. I'm assuming these are not buttons. No, those are just decorative. I love on the left, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and 2000s, just to cover all of our bases. There was no music before the 1950s. Jukeboxes go back good 20 years before the 50s, so it's kind of funny, but they are associated with the 50s, I think, more than any other decade. On the right, we've got pop, rock, jazz, blues, disco, R&B, sorry, rap fans, and any other kind of genre of music out there. Apparently, this isn't the unit for you. So again, it's just it's just decoration. That's all decorative. I would have rather seen something else there. I think that's a little tacky in, in my opinion, but I guess it does the job. I thought at first glance they were buttons, maybe for EQ presets, but they're definitely not just decorative. In the middle there, we've got a USB jack and an SD card slot, which is awesome. So that allows us to play digital music right off of a thumb drive. Do people still call them that? Thumb drives, USB, and SD cards as well, which obviously we'll test that out. And then below that, we've got kind of what looks like a car radio kind of retro looking adjustment here. We've got a light, okay, that's a push button light switch and then a knob. These are just plastic cheap button or knobs. And then here we've got the uh, transport controls, function controls, there's an aux in. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for that section. This L LCD display will probably show the track names for the CD and also show the FM station information as well. I guess I wasn't pushing firmly enough before to open this, but it's the same basic idea. You just Put your CD in there. I think I lost a piece down in there. Oops, should be okay. I think a little piece of paper fell down in there. But basically this is a center spindle snap down CD mechanism that's required for vertical players like this or portable players. 
can't use a tray mechanism when you go vertical. So that's not unexpected whatsoever. And these little bearings here are spring loaded. So they hold the CD on there firmly. We'll test that out as well. And that's pretty much it at the close up look. Okay, time to power it up. Just click the power button once, comes to life. Nice white backlight with a black LED or LCD display, I should say. That's cool. Let's go ahead and start with the uh, digital file playback. I've got a four gig SD card. This is a 128 kilobit MP3 file. Testing one, two, three, four. This is a 256 kilobit MP3 file. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so apparently it only plays back MP3 files, no WAV files, which is okay. I mean, for this application, for this purpose, playing back a high resolution, studio grade, WAV file is probably not a requirement. In the manual, it does show a number of things, how to's, specifications, et cetera, et cetera. It does not mention anything about the playback formats or compatibility. So that's sort of on a case by case trial basis. But there we go. We have started with that and I want to go through the different functions. Let's go ahead and turn the lights on while we're at it. Looks awesome. I'm going to dim the lights a bit so we can see those lights a little bit better. That looks really cool. Totally different color palette than the other jukebox. But that is awesome. We got orange, we've got green, we've got a lighter orange on the bottom. That's really cool because I know that the other one, this piece around here doesn't even light up whatsoever. And you can turn the lights off if you don't want the light effects, but that's really cool. And it also lights up inside there, which the other one doesn't do. So that's really, really cool. And there's a way to, there's a switch on the back so you can turn on or off the strobing effect if you don't like that. In fact, let's try that. Let's go ahead and flip that to the other position and then it'll just be solid. So if you just like the solid light, there you go. That's really cool. I think that's really, in the blue, look, even in the, Inside the trim pieces is lit up. That is really cool. I love lights, flashing things. Why not? Make it fun. You know, this is clearly a novelty piece, right? This is a novelty device. So let's enjoy a little bit of novelty, a little bit of fun. So many people in the audio world seem to have a hard time with just having fun. Like, relax. This isn't so serious. Let's just have some fun. You know what I mean? Okay, let's play a CD next. So I'm going to... Takes a bit of a strong push to get that to open up. We're gonna use some Sinatra today. Obviously, we can only use very select, it's kind of hard to do this gracefully, only select little clips, but we should be able to use some. Gonna flip back over to CD mode. And yeah, CD is loading. Let me fl flip back to the uh, front facing stereo mic so you can hear it better. Suddenly you're a lot older And all the... I never found a rainbow Once upon a time A girl with moonlight in her eyes Okay, let me know what you guys think. I thought it sounded good. It's a bit booming and hollow sounding, but it had good bass. It's a decent sort of full range speaker. For this purpose, it is definitely adequate. It doesn't sound cheap. It doesn't sound tinny. It sounds full and rich. There's just a little boxiness, which is no big surprise. I'm assuming that the bulk of this unit is fairly cavernous if you were to open it up, which we may do in a future show. I also want to touch base on the fact that this, again, does have the USB and the SD card playback. But this also has Bluetooth, so you can connect your Bluetooth device, like your phone, and use this as a Bluetooth speaker. I'm not going to test that out today. A line input, which you can see down there in the bottom right-hand corner. But nothing is going to supersede the sound quality of a compact disc. So that's a good baseline for us to make an assessment on the sound quality. But it's important to know that there's some playback options for you, which I think is really cool. Now, let's go to the radio and see how that works. I'm not sure if it's a scan radio. I don't see a tuning dial.
So the radio does allow you to manually tune to any frequency on the FM band, but it can scan as well. You can press and hold and scan to the next station. You can also have it auto scan and then pre-save the stations that it does that it does find. With the radio compression that FM broadcasters use, it kind of enhances that kind of boxy booming sound. Again, FM broadcasters do a sound compression, not digital compression, but sound compression on the audio to make it sound better on car speakers and small speakers and things of that nature, little boom boxes. So when you've got a speaker that already has sort of a warm, rich, bassy tone like this one, it kind of can be a little over the top in terms of bass and and low end a bit, but most people aren't gonna have an issue with that. I do not see a remote with this, so there's no EQ controls that I have found and therefore no way to sort of shape the sound. Okay, what are my thoughts? Overall, I think this is very, very cool. It is pricey. This is not an affordable option for a lot of folks, but if you can afford it, if you have the money to spend and you really want something like this, as far as these go, and this will be the third one that is the same size, the same you know basic form and function that I have reviewed, and of those three, I think this is the best one. I think it edges out the Victrola in terms of functionality, and I think it's on par in terms of quality. And so based on that, I think this does edge it out a little bit. We did review a clear click one uh, a couple years ago, and that was very basic. So I, I think this is the best of the three. That being said, uh, be advised that it's not a, a super rugged device. It is plastic and pressed wood, and it's not something that you know would be for kids or anything like that. I could see a, a child destroying this, you know, kind of delicate mechanism. Um, it's not the most graceful way to play CDs because you kind of have to manhandle the disc to put it in. It does have FM radio, no AM radio. And I'm, I know I'm fault finding, but it's you know kind of the job of a reviewer. I want you to be aware of everything that I encountered. Decorative stuff like this, I think they could do without. I'd rather see something else in place of the yellow sticker with the fake buttons. Um, the overall design aesthetic is fantastic. It's fun, it's cool looking. It definitely captures the vibe and the feeling. Interesting color choice, sort of the teal blue and the orange and the yellow but it works and it's cool to have both USB and SD card capability. And not only that, they give you full size SD card slot, not just a micro, which is pretty rare these days as well. Having Bluetooth is a given. This is gonna be a lossy uh, Bluetooth connection. So it's not gonna be like a, a super high quality Bluetooth, but on these speakers, on this type of system, you wouldn't notice anyway. Of course, you can always revert back to your lossless compact discs if you wanted to go that route, but it has all the connectivity and features that I can imagine anybody wanting. Even if it doesn't have your exact feature or your exact format that you want, you've got the aux in capability. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it two thumbs up. It's a fun device. Let me know down in the comments below what you think. ordered your official Recordology 45 adapter yet? Check out the link in the video description below. All right, my friends, and that is going to do it. Thank you so very, very much for watching. If you haven't done so already, if you're new here, hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to select the, or hit the bell notification, select all. That way you get those notifications for when we go live or we do giveaways. We've got more giveaways coming soon, more surprises, more announcements, and more fun. Lots of new reviews. we got notifications that things have been arriving and shipped to us. So we got a lot of fun things that are coming your way soon here on Recordology. But, my friends, that is going to do it for today. So happy record hunting. We'll see you next time.